So, <clears throat> we are back. <clears throat> I finally got a way to rig a camera up here in my new studio. And uh, I'm going to try to start making these videos again. A lot has happened in the last two years. I went through cancer. And fortunately, I seem to have survived it, which I'm very grateful about. And I've had job issues and all kinds of other issues. And I'm only now starting to get my life back together. So, but we are getting it back together and things are getting better. So that is the good news. Um, what else is news? Uh, I moved to Bavaria. I am no longer in Hanover. I live in a small town called Kloster Lechfeld now. And I like it here, except that it's awfully quiet. And due to the fact that I had cancer last year and then the COVID crisis hit, well, there hasn't been much time to get out and meet people or explore or do a lot of other things. We're under a pretty serious lockdown here right now. And, um... We're strongly encouraged not to go out unless there's a good reason to do so. The weather's terrible. It's cold. And not nice out. And by German standards, COVID's pretty bad. So, right now there's not much going out and doing anything. Um, what I'm working on here is a new Sea Beasties picture. I started this a couple of months ago. I'm working on it on and off. And we'll see how it goes. And there hadn't been very much in the way of um, other exciting news. I've been busy just trying to keep my head above water financially and rebuild my life after cancer. And all that other good stuff. And so, that's the story. I hope you guys are doing good out there. Feel free to leave me a message in the, uh, comments below yeah I like that that looks kind of cool contrast man one of the things I really like and I think works really well is to get some contrast <clears throat> one of the things I, I always think about is that um, in order to make good art really whatever you lay down on the paper or the canvas or whatever it is that you're painting on the board you have to remember that you have to reduce all the things that a person sees to somewhere between <clears throat> the range of brightness that your eye sees is like this big the range of brightness that you can do with paint on a surface is like this big. So, to fix that, if this is your whitest white and this is your blackest black that you can see, when you paint like this, the darks have to, there have to be some darks that are really dark and there have to be some lights that are like that, 100% white somewhere. And then you want to compress everything into that value system. That's the trick. A lot of amateurs' paintings, the problem with them is they haven't, they haven't actually compressed the values enough. They need more compression. There needs to be a little tiny bit more dark and a little tiny bit more light. And so, yeah, usually with most people, when they paint either with, with watercolors or oils, the things that I see is the darks just aren't dark enough.
you can get by with almost anything else. You can have distorted perception, perspective might be all wrong, um, proportions can be really odd and it just looks surrealistic or modern or like Picasso or something. But if the darks aren't dark and the lights aren't light or there isn't this deep intensity, then you're missing something. And most of the time, it just doesn't work as well. It doesn't mean that everything has to have this huge contrast. It just means that some things need to have it to sort of define what is really dark. And then when you can do that, then you got something. I don't know, to me, that's, that's the one thing that really makes some works of art really stand out is that that compression in the way that they capture the difference between darks and lights and frankly I see it in most good artists it's there somewhere it may not be that they have real dark blacks somewhere not always a question of being black you look at a lot of Picasso's works there's not a lot of black in them, but there are really intense colors, and then there are lighter colors. And see, that to me is why it works. One of the reasons why it works. There's a lot of other reasons, but that's part of it. Because you have to have some intensity at some point, so that there's a contrast in the lighting and the painting. And if you look at the real world, the real world looks like that as well. Okay. That kind of fixes up some spots. This is almost done, actually. I need to put some more highlights in the blues here. I need to do something about these balls of light at the top. I'm not sure what yet. There's a little bit of detail to do in here. I'm not wild about this side. I might have to do something with that, but we'll think about it. And then these little top pieces have to be done. <coughs> so one thing is, if I'm working on the top of the painting, instead of leaning over the painting, I just move to the top of the painting. That, that always works better. Yeah, do. If you got questions or comments, please leave your name below in the in the comments section here on YouTube. And I'll uh I'll try to answer them in the next interview or the next the next time I, I, I got a time to work on one of these. Um before when I was in Hanover I was teaching and because of that I had a lot of free time and so I had more time to work on this stuff. Now, I'm not, I'm working again as an engineer, and that's good because it's more money, which I need to pay my bills, but it's bad because there's less time to paint, although I'm trying to rework my schedule into something. Alright, I'm going to take a short break and then I'll be right back at this. So, <clears throat> we are back. <clears throat> I finally got a way to rig a camera up here in my new studio. And I'm going to try to start making these videos again. A lot has happened in the last two years. I went through cancer. And fortunately, I seem to have survived it, which I'm very grateful about. And I've had job issues. And all kinds of other issues. And I'm only now starting to get my life back together. So, but we're got getting it back together and things are getting better. So that is the good news. Um, what else is news? Uh, I moved to Bavaria. 
I am no longer in Hanover. I live in a small town called Kloster Lechfeld now. And I like it here, except that it's awfully quiet. And due to the fact that I had cancer last year and then the COVID crisis hit, well, there hasn't been much time to get out and meet people or explore or do a lot of other things. We're under a pretty serious lockdown here right now. And um, we're strongly encouraged not to go out unless there's a good reason to do so. The weather's terrible. It's cold and not nice out. And by German standards, COVID's pretty bad. So, right now there's not much going out and doing anything. Um, what I'm working on here is a new Sea Beasties picture. I started this a couple of months ago. I'm working on it on and off. And we'll see how it goes. And there hadn't been very much in the way of um, other exciting news. I've been busy just trying to keep my head above water financially. And rebuild my life after cancer. And all that other good stuff. And so, that's the story. Hope you guys are doing good out there. Feel free to leave me a message in the uh, comments below. Yeah, I like that. That looks kind of cool. Contrast, man. One of the things I really like and I think works really well is to get some contrast. <clears throat> One of the things I, I always think about is that um, in order to make good art, really, whatever you lay down on the paper or the canvas or whatever it is that you're painting on the board, you have to remember that you have to reduce all the things that a person sees to somewhere between the range of brightness that your eye sees is like this big. The range of brightness that you can do with paint on a surface is like this big. So to fix that, if this is your whitest white and this is your blackest black that you can see, when you paint like this, the darks have, to, there have to be some darks that are really dark and there have to be some lights that are like that, 100% white somewhere. And then you want to compress everything into that value system. That's the trick. A lot of amateurs paintings, the problem with them is they haven't, they haven't actually compressed the values enough. They need more compression. There needs to be a little tiny bit more dark and a little tiny bit more light. And so yeah, usually with most people, when they paint either with, with watercolors or oils, the things that I see is the darks just aren't dark enough. You can get by with almost anything else. You can have distorted perception, perspective might be all wrong, um, Proportions can be really odd and it just looks surrealistic or modern or like Picasso or something. But if the darks aren't dark and the lights aren't light or there isn't this deep intensity, then you're missing something. And most of the time it just doesn't work as well. It doesn't mean that everything has to have this huge contrast. It just means that some things need to have it to sort of define what is really dark. And then when you can do that, then you got something. I don't know, to me, that's, that's the one thing that really makes 
some works of art really stand out is that that compression in the way that they capture the difference between darks and lights. And frankly, I see it in most good artists. It's there somewhere. It may not be that they have real dark blacks somewhere. Not always a question of being black. You look at a lot of Picasso's works, there's not a lot of black in them. But there are really intense colors, and then there are lighter colors. And see, that to me is why it works. One of the reasons why it works. There's a lot of other reasons, but that's part of it. Because you have to have some intensity at some point so that there's a contrast in the lighting and the painting. And if you look at the real world, the real world looks like that as well. Okay, that kind of fixes up some spots. This is almost done, actually. I need to put some more highlights in the blues here. I need to do something about these balls of light at the top. I'm not sure what yet. There's a little bit of detail to do in here. I'm not wild about this side. I might have to do something with that, but we'll think about it. And then these little top pieces have to be done. <coughs> so one thing is, if I'm working on the top of the painting, instead of leaning over the painting, I just move to the top of the painting. That, that always works better. Yeah, do. If you got questions or comments, please leave your name below in the in the comments section here on YouTube. And I'll uh I'll try to answer them in the next interview or the next the next time I, I, I got a time to work on one of these. Um before when I was in Hanover I was teaching and because of that I had a lot of free time and so I had more time to work on this stuff. Now, I'm not, I'm working again as an engineer, and that's good because it's more money, which I need to pay my bills, but it's bad because there's less time to paint, although I'm trying to rework my schedule into something. All right, I'm going to take a short break, and then I'll be right back at this. So, back to the painting project. Took another little break there. We just found out a few minutes ago that Barveria is under absolute full lockdown for the next month, starting on Wednesday. It's back to the way it was back in March and April. Serious bummer. Oh well, that's how it goes sometimes. It's really the only thing anybody can do about this. This being Germany, we're not taking a chance in having the hospitals overloaded and triage and all that other crap happening. That would not be a very positive thing. Germans expect to get medical treatment when they are sick. And overall, our death rate is pretty low, if you look at it because we have good medical treatment and our hospitals are not overloaded. So, we'll see what happens. I don't even know if I'll be going to work. I might have to work from home. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. I prefer going to work. I, I like being able to get out of the house. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I had it back in March and April. I, I had a six-week period when I felt absolutely terrible. And I have some, I have a fair number of the symptoms of long-term COVID, which I'm not going to get into today. But it's really, really, really hard to say. 
I hope I didn't have it. The last thing that I need after cancer is being further crippled by having some other terrible disease. On the other hand, I'm alive. And a lot of people aren't. So I'm happy. I'm much harder times painting straight lines than I used to. It's getting better, but it's still not where I'd like it to be. Yeah, this whole this whole experience that I had with having cancer and being sick, um, it was an eye opener. I'll put it like that. And I know I don't want to go through it again. It was bad. So I have tried to reform myself. I do not smoke. I do not drink excessively at all. I've changed my diet. So that now I'm eating a lot more veggies and high protein which is supposed to be good for you so we'll see We'll see how it goes. Honestly, it's really all anybody can ever do is just sort of see how it goes. There isn't any other real way to isn't any other real way to deal with it. I got some other things coming up. I'm going to show them to you at the end of this video that I'm working on. The music you're hearing in the background, and I'll put some music in at the end, that's all from Michael Garfield. He's a artist and a musician, and he works for something, I believe it's called the Complexity Institute out there. He does really cool artwork. You should look up his website if you get a chance. It's some amazing stuff. Google around for it. Um, there's all kinds of cool music as well. Michael Garfield, spelled like it sounds. We'll probably get this one finished today. And then I have another one. Um, I don't think I've ever showed any of these on the show here. 
but I have a series of paintings I've been working on called Fackforkhäuser. They're these half timber houses that you see all over Europe and England. And they're, again, they're kind of surrealistic. They're not like my realistic art. <clears throat> but they're just kind of playful and fun. So you'll see one of those too here at the end. And let's see here. Normally when I paint, I either listen to music or I have TV on in the background or something. Problem is, I can't do that while I'm making this show. Because if I do, then I'm responsible for owning the rights to the music or the television soundtrack. <clears throat> so, that's a no-go. We still have a few more little details to put in here, but I'm going to put this on. dry a little.
Yeah, this gives it a real dark color. As I was saying earlier, that makes a difference. I do wonder how other people get through this sort of crisis. I guess everybody has their own thing. be a really busy painting, more so than I planned on. Okay. Well, I still got to do the steps. Sometimes it's easier to turn the picture than it is to make your body. Uh, I need a break. Let the stress go out and then we'll come back and deal with this. So I took a little break, then I finished this up here, the stairs, filled in some other stuff. Basically I'm done. Just gonna put the signature block on. And then this one's finished. And then I'm going to show you guys some of the things coming up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show those things and talk about each one for 10 or 15 seconds. And then I'm going to do a little special where I talk about them a little bit more, maybe five minutes. And put that out as a second video. Okay, that has to dry a bit. It's always possible to side that a little bit more, but I think it's finished. So, some other things I'm working on. This is a farm scene in Holland. And I think that's probably next weekend's project. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Might work on it some tonight.
this one is in the city of Groningen. It's one of my favorite scenes, standing on the south side of the North Canal, looking north. It's about half finished. And then this is a painting I've been meaning to do for 10 years. It's the train station at Venegaroda for the narrow gauge train. And I started one and I wasn't happy with the way it was coming out, so I just put it aside and I'm doing another one. So we'll work on that one too. And then of course there's some other stuff. Like, this is almost finished. This is the new Fact Workhouse series. And so I'll finish this one up probably next today. And then, I don't know, we'll see what happens next. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. I'm hoping to put at least two of these shows out a month. Maybe, maybe I'll get energetic and put out three. I think it's realistic to expect that I might have one weekend off here and there. Um, I don't know, though. We'll see how it goes. I enjoy doing them. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.